We are back. Cap episode 61. We appreciate you guys coming back for another dose of Cap. I'm Sound, your weekly host, and we have the Chub Corner down a Chub for now. I'm back. I'm back. Marlon's back. I missed me. I was sick. I apologize. My nieces and nephews, I'm going to blame them. They got me sick. Oh, it's on them. I'm going to blame them because, bro, listen, the way that they work in a household is my nieces and my nephew get sick, right? So then their cousins live on the third floor. So then the kids from the third floor are straight. Mm. So then they come downstairs, they get sick. So when my cousins start getting better, these motherfuckers come downstairs and get them sick. So it's a fucking loop. You know what I'm saying? So Damn. That's that. Say, Blame man. the neighbors then. But I'm fucking back though. He's back. Everyone, shout out to you know everyone asking for where was Marloon. Marloon is back this week again. Episode sixty one. I'm gonna cover some topics with Marloon mindset. Erlin, the other half of the chub might stroll in during the episode, but we don't know yet. No confirmation. Nonetheless, if you're here for the Hennessy interview, enjoy it right now. They gonna let me for my ambition. Woo! We are here. You know. Very, very special guest this week, especially when it comes to Providence, Rhode Island, and the music scene in general. This is someone that I definitely had on the list of people to have a conversation with when it came to the actual creation of this platform, this podcast. We've had her on the channel before. She has been on the infamous Drake CLB reaction online that went viral. She was a part of that. We had her doing a quick you know commercial break right there showing you guys spotlighting her music at that time and aside from that behind the scenes she's helped us herself you know she connected us with Wale about I want to say like two years ago when he dropped his album we did the uh reaction to his album and you know he showed us love to social media it was because of this you know lovely lady sitting to the right of me she connected us with him you know and now at least he knows who we are you know because we still use his um his song at the end of a. Uh, Everything, even at the end of this podcast, I put it yeah. at the end of every um video on YouTube. I'd, I'd still use his um ambition song as the outro, his quick, you know, three second segment because synonymous with our brand, you know, Club Ambition, it's in the name that song, Ambition and Wale, and she helped us connect with him. But nonetheless, we have someone that has gained, you know, major traction in a matter of two years in a short amount of time, major traction. And rightfully so, because like I told her before off camera in the past, she has a lot of, you know, a lot of following, you know, a lot of growth and a lot of potential. So all she really has to do is just put the, you know, the good work out, the good music out, the actual good energy out there. And, you know, people are going to gravitate to it because she already, you know, has that love. And we have her, you know, now two years later being successful and on the road to becoming, you know, potentially a very impactful and potential even legendary artist. Hennessy, <laughs> welcome Thank to the me. studio. Appreciate I'm you. To be here. <laughs> Appreciate you coming through. Um, you know, I'm excited to talk to you and a lot of the people out there, you have a fan base, you know, for those who don't know, she has a fan base. Like and not even just obviously locally, but outside throughout her, you know, touring and your posts, I've seen everything. Like you have, you know, I, shout out to Maine. You have like this, this <laughs> following in Maine. Way. So I know a lot of people in Maine are going to be watching right now. But when it comes to Hennessy's story, and, you know, I'm excited to, because a lot of this stuff is new information for myself as a fan. Let's start from the beginning. Where were you born? And if you mind sharing, you don't have to share. What's your full, like, legal name? Is it Hennessy? What's your full breakdown, your full bio? I was born and raised on the south side of Providence, Rhode Island, and my government name is Hennessy. Hennessy. Oh, so it is Hennessy, obviously, yes. right? Okay. South side of Rhode Island. And is your family, are they like similar to mine or they they weren't from here? I've had some members of my family from here, but my direct family, my parents, they migrated here. They're from DR, but then they moved here. They were from DR. Is it the same with your story? Because I know you're Dominican. What's the Dominican breakdown of your family's background? My mother is Dominican, and she was born um, in the Bronx. My father migrated from DR, but they're both from La Capital. La Capital. Wow, so you're both Dominican on both sides. Yeah. Wow. So, so your mother had ties. How, how, how long was she in the Bronx? Were you in the Bronx at all during your childhood? No, was, no not at all. Um, she moved young, I think, like elementary school to, to Providence, to the wow. south side. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, my mom. My mom wasn't born in the Bronx, but she 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 went to school there. I think for high school, then she dropped out in the Bronx. So my grandfather lived in the Bronx. Oh wow, that's dope. Okay, so then fast forwarding from that, when it came to you out here in Providence, Rhode Island, what was your story as a child? Where did you go to elementary? I know you grew up in the South Side, and I kind of know the area. So was it similar to me where you went to like Robert L. Bailey, like the direct school in that area? What was your elementary story starting when it comes to Rhode Island schools? I went to Robert L. Bailey. Oh, you um, did? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You went, were a Bailey buddy. Oh, yeah. I think I remember, we talked about it before. Yeah, yeah you yeah. were a Bailey buddy. That's I was true. A Bailey buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then after that, for sixth and seventh grade, I went to Times Two Academy. And then for eighth grade, I went to Roger Williams um, okay. Middle School on the South Side. And then for high school, I went to PCTA. PCTA, okay. So right away, the stands out definitely is definitely Roger Williams. How, what was your experience at Roger Williams? Shout out to Jeremy Pena. We had him last week. He said to, he went to Roger Williams as well. I will be picking on Roger Williams. <laughs> no, I said it last week. It was like the worst you know middle school in the world. But at the Perry, time, Perry. it was really bad. It was bad. It was so bad. It was like a, a transition from charter school. So like I was in like. Charter school, you're on the you're on the bus. Yeah. Everybody's not thinking of the things that they're thinking about in public school. So we would be on the bus listening to like Little Wayne. Then I get home, whatever, and then listen to music. When I was at Roger Williams, people were like having sex in like hallways. Yeah. Um, they were just they always talked about sex, and I'm just like, oh my god, like y'all are so young and y'all are having <laughs> sex. Like there was Scary. this one. There was this one time this girl, uh, oh, I was going to say her name, I'm bugging. Yeah. Um, she um, she told me like, oh yeah, my best friend um, ended up having sex with my boyfriend. And I'm just like, y'all having sex and drama? <laughs> like, uh, like this is crazy. Love and hip hop, Roger Williams, was, Rhode Island it was, style. It was, and everybody was always fighting. Like, yeah, I remember were getting this. jumped and I'm like, damn, like I just like I was always like cool. Like I never had beef with anybody, oh but God. it was just crazy to just like sit back and observe like, damn, y'all wilding. Yeah, because that school, man, it, it was like, is it the, it's the only middle school in that area. Yeah. Right? I'm pretty sure, mm -hmm. especially at that time. So it's like in the middle of the hood, right? They sent everyone there. Like, I remember my mom was dying for me to not go there. And like, somehow, with the grace of God, I got into the gifted program at Nathaniel Green. But that Roger Williams, like, you know, moment era <laughs> <laughs> in Providence, like everyone knows about the stories from there. Like, yeah. that shit was like... It always sounded like, oh, my God, like, what is going on over there? <laughs> yeah. And whenever I drive by, they'll be like, no one was inside. I'm like, Dude, these kids not, this is not, no one's learning in here. This is all outside, like, chilling and Yo, stuff. Everybody used to always bunk. I remember That's that. That's crazy. They used to always skip school. Oh, my God. But then fast forward and you went to PCTA. Yeah. So was it uh, during when, because PCTA was relatively new. Yeah, it was relatively new. I think my brother was the first um, graduating class from PCTA. So when I was a freshman, he was a senior. So for those who don't know out there, PCTA is a school that is not the stereotypical high school. It's more of a, I guess, can you call it a trade school? Yeah, it's a technical school. Yeah. Technical school, yeah, right? Because yeah. the way they set it up is for you to go in and kind of come out with a job. So what was your decision to go there? And do you have a specific, like, you know, trade? I think, you know, mm -hmm. certain people, like, I think, what did Edwin go for? Like, I, f I forgot. Uh, uh, for um, Was it for, gra graphics? for graphics? Yeah. Okay. So everyone went kind of for something specifically. What was your situation with PCTA? Um... I just went there because my brother went there, so my mom yeah. like made me go there, and I ended up picking culinary because all my friends did culinary. Oh, you were chefing it up, though. Yeah, we was, but the chefs couldn't cook, which was crazy. Like, I think that's what my sister did. Yeah, she like, did. They she didn't did add no seasoning to their food. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, no. damn. So did you like? Did, did you graduate fully with that as it was a culinary thing? Yeah, or yeah. But I never like applied I, it. I wasn't like that taking it. That I wish I did graphic design though. When I think about it now, like that would have been really clutch. I yeah, I knew a lot, a couple people that did um graphic design. I, I've heard good things from the graphic design program over there. Yes, I am. So then transitioning from that. You did that situation over there. So was it a, something like when it came to now the big moment where everyone decides to either go to college or not? Was it something that you had like your parents kind of help you decide? Or was it a situation for yourself where you were like, no, I'm going to just do me. I'm going to do this. What was that that sort of like moment for you transitioning from the big, you know, senior year? Now what's going to happen next? Um, I wanted to go to college. Like my mom never forced me to do anything. She supported anything I wanted to do in life. I um, ended up going to CCRI my freshman year, and then I did TD my sophomore year, oh, wow. and then I went to URI. Okay. And were you there for full, uh, full, you graduated and everything at URI or no? No, I dropped out. You dropped out. What year did you drop out? I think my s sophomore year. Like, I failed my sophomore year. 
Really? Yeah, like I, it was a lot. I was going through a lot that year. Yeah, I know myself. Uh, my freshman year was terrible. Yeah, I try to I try to go back, and I was just like, yeah, it's just not for me. Like, uh, I'm good. What was happening at that time? If you don't mind sharing, like, especially something that maybe like pops out for you. Because, for example, my freshman year, I always talk about it. Like, that was my year where I had like a huge breakup. My whole life was changing, and I was going into freshman. I'm like what the fuck i felt so alone i'm like i'm going to college and i'm like alone like what is i was supposed to have all these plans and then i was like failing every class and then with the grace of god i started doing summer courses and you know expedited my process but what was your mindset you know you know you had so it wasn't a financial situation because you had the td right yeah i didn't have td i had um college crusaders so they helped similar to td basically matching everything so it wasn't a financial des- a decision where most people kind of is. People yeah. always come across with that, like, oh, I can't afford it. Your situation was, I'm assuming, more personal. What was it, if you don't mind sharing, or if something that kind of stands um, out from that time? I, I definitely went through my first heartbreak. Oh, oh yeah. same. Similar. Went through my first. I was like, that shit really... <laughs> That shit had me in my dorm crying to like Bryson Tiller. That was the year Bryson Tiller, all, all that music came out. Bryson oh, Tiller no. came out. Um, Kehlani came out. Um, yeah, and then like that was during also during the time where I was like experiencing like really bad flare ups. Like I wasn't mm. diagnosed diagnosed with Crohn's yet, mm-hmm. so I was just in my dorm. Like my stomach was hurting, and I was depressed. I was like, I'm not going to class. Yeah, and it's, it's, and perfect. Um, you know, pivot real quick when it comes to that situation. I myself definitely saw you online. You had a, a good amount of following, like I said in the past. I've always said it, and it was prior to the music. And one of the things that stood out to me was every time I would see you post, I'm like, "This is so dope!" Like she would have interactions online with like people about her, you know, exact situation that had the same thing as her, which was Crohn's disease. Mm-hmm. And there was situations where like you would even talk about forums and like very like you know open about something that. People typically aren't, you know, you always seem to be very prideful of this situation. If you don't mind sharing to the public, what was your situation and break down even a definition for a lot of people who don't know what Crohn's disease is? So I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease when I was turning, I think turning 19. Wow. And it's like inflammation within the lining of your like digestive system. So I have Crohn's and colitis. So like IBS like full like the full effect wow um wait what else is so so uh so okay so you got that yeah. you broke it down the definition so then how did that affect you i guess is to add it to that question how did it affect you at that time in your life and how did you kind of steer towards kind of like seeking that community and interacting with people that had it were you kind of just confused about it and you're like let me just do this or did like people kind of connect with you naturally how did that happen like that whole you know moment of like okay i have crohn's but now i'm connecting with other people that have it it's affecting my day-to-day let me adjust and now you're still here today you know touring doing all this stuff normally you know going about your day but then I see the tweets you tweet about it randomly sometimes like it affects you randomly right but you still somehow push through what was that actual you know realization point and like connecting with people that might have even have in it okay um i was in the hospital and um one of my close friends he's like a brother jazz he like came to visit me and like i was just bored and he's like you should download reddit and i'm like oh what's reddit he's like oh it's just like i don't know how he explained it he was like usually people you know, like people have burner accounts on Twitter. Yeah. He's like, people have like burner accounts on Reddit. You're not necessarily supposed to have like your username, but I ended up using my own username. Um, and then I, with Reddit, it's like subreddits. So like you can like follow like Crohn's disease, IBS, like young thug pages, um, fashion pages. So I followed like Crohn's disease and like I was new to it. So I was just asking so many questions and like there were, there were people that were like, 30 something years old 40 something year old with Crohn's and they dealt with it their whole life so they were just giving me like so much advice and like at a moment in my life where I felt so like hopeless because I was it was new to me and it's something that's going to continue to affect me for the rest of my life because there's no um, cure yet so um, I take infusions every eight weeks for it and it's like a hour infusion it's um, in Tivio. it like helps like calm down the flare like the flare-ups but yeah it was it was reddit where like a lot of people just like um 
I was I was just talking with them about anything. I'll ask questions. And then, like, once I was out the hospital, I was, like, posting. Because, like, the time I was in the hospital was, like, extremely depressing. And it was, like, really, really bad. Like, what I was going through while I was in the hospital. Yeah. So, like, I came back and I gave updates. And they were just so happy. Like, every, like, random people were, like, DM me on Instagram. Like, oh, I saw your post on Reddit. Like, you you show me that it's possible to live with a chronic disease and still be able to do things because like I was traveling, like I went to LA for my best friend's birthday. Like I was just, I, I, I felt so hopeless at that moment when I was in the hospital. But after that, I'm like, nah, like I got a second chance at life. So like, yeah. let me be outside. Yeah. Cause for, and break down for the quick summary, like how does it affect your, your, your actual day to day? You do the, you know, scheduled, you said every eight week yes. infusion, but then when it comes to on a day to day basis, like how can it affect you like right now? Like what could possibly, you know, happen that can make you like, you know, I think you said earlier flare up kind of like break that down. Um, a flare up usually happens. Well, everyone's different. So like certain foods people eat, I know they flare up. Um, mine, um, I think it might be. Sp no, it's not even spicy food because I eat spicy food all the time. <laughs> so I don't I don't know. I haven't found a specific food where like as soon as I eat it, like my stomach just right like, away, yeah. just hurts really, really bad. But I know like stress causes it. And sometimes when I know like it's close to my infusion, like for the medicine, like my stomach will start hurting a little bit because it's like my body's telling me it's time for the medicine. Um, yeah, mostly yeah. stress or like when my body just feels like overworked. Yeah. In a sense. Um and sometimes when I do eat food, but it it's not like definitive because like sometimes I'll eat it again and my stomach won't hurt. Wow. And how old are you now? 25. 25. So you had it for like six years now? Yeah. Wow. No, yeah, because I, I don't have that and it's not as as um as serious, but I have myself. I was diagnosed about three years ago now with um, Graves' disease. A lot of people don't, don't know I have Graves' disease. And, you know, it was scary myself finding out, you know, certain things. Because one thing, because especially now I was like, you were 19, so similar to me, we were both adults finding this out, right? Like, it was like, oh, this is like, and they they attached the word disease to it, right? Yeah, no matter yeah, what. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, hold up. What a disease? Like, that's some scary shit, right? But, you know, it's, it's stuff that is a disease. It's diseases that you can live through. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, her situation is more serious because it's a chronic one. Mm -hmm. But it's stuff that you can definitely live through. But it's definitely eye-opening experiences, you know, health, you know, people be healthy like people kind of like try to forget about their health sometimes but that shit is, is very very serious now going back to your transition from college and now when it comes to your actual profession were you always you know growing up as a child you said you obviously listen to music little wayne it was a part of your everyday life but were you always fantasizing on becoming an artist did you have dreams as a young you know girl to become an artist did you have any experiences like you know maybe even trying out at a young age but it didn't work out maybe any prior artist names any young you know aspiring you know young careers like yeah. what was your story when it comes to that um i always wanted to like sing i was i knew i always wanted to be an artist really um, we're like me and my team we're like working on something right now for me so like i'm watching like home tapes oh, wow. and um like vcrs and stuff old yeah school. yeah so like there's this there's just so many videos of me like with a mic like a mic in my hand or like this like guitar my mom got me <laughs> and then like I, I can't dance for shit so like there's this video of like my cousins dancing and I'm like no I don't want to dance and my aunt's like if you want to be a singer you have to be in front of the camera and I'm like fine <laughs> but um I first started off rapping because my older brother rapped okay. so at 13 um he had like a, a mic in his closet and I recorded my first rap song wow. and I went by AK-47 Lil Hen. Oh, <laughs> I think I've seen this as a username or something in the past. <laughs> wow. And how, uh, and what, uh, so is that up still? AK-47 Lil Hen? Yeah, the song and everything at that time? <laughs> um, is it still no, in public? No, nowhere. <laughs> but um, uh, there's YouTube videos somewhere um, of me like freestyling with my brother's wow. friends. Wow. Like, I, I, he would always tell me to freestyle, um, like, rap, battle rap them. Um, there's um, so old songs when I was, like, 12, 13 with my brother. I was singing, like, the hooks because yeah. he used to rap. Yeah. And he had, like, a rap group with his friends. Um, there's a video of, of me in, in high school. I did the, the talent show at PCTA. Mm. So, like, if people find the videos, like, <laughs> they, they can find them. But that none of, none of, like, my, I don't have them songs public at all. I still have them, but I'm not. <laughs> 
But that's cool though. Okay, so it's definitely always always something, you know, a part of your path, a part of your journey that you had, you know, sprinkled moments of, you know, artistry and want to become an artist, you know, even with like, you know, different names, AK forty seven, Luan. You know, which wouldn't be too far fetched from these names we got <laughs> nowadays. Like everyone always has like some sort of like gun or something attached to them, especially rappers. <laughs> You know, that would have been a hard R&B name. I don't know. Nah. But yeah. I like I like Hennessy, though. Yeah, I like my government name. But um, <laughs> there was this, like, I was, like, a big, big um, Soulja Boy fan in high school. Oof. So he had this song called AK-47, Lil' Hen. And I was, like, I mean, AK-47. And that was, like, my favorite Soulja song. Boy song. So I was, like, I'm going to go buy AK-47, Lil' Hen. <laughs> 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 and it stuck. And then when it came to singing, what made you want to transition into to singing because you said you started rapping but what what made you like want to do that fully did you have any moments early on where like you were like oh i should just do this or do you still rap like what is that um when i was in the hospital i had like an epiphany mm. where i was like so my mom was explaining this yes yesterday how i was in a coma for like four days when i was in the hospital like i was extremely septic um, I was in the ICU, had like a pick line in my neck. Wow. Um, like when I woke up out of the coma, I couldn't recognize anybody, like Damn. not even my mom, whatever. So my memory is still kind of like bad, like wow. to this day. Like I'd be forgetting shit like so easy. But I was just like in the hospital. I'm like, damn, like if I died, I haven't traveled. Like I ha I never got on a plane because I was so paranoid from like 9-11. So mm -hmm. like my mom and my dad would go to DR, like they were vacation and i will be like, I'm not going on a plane, I'm staying, I'm staying home. So I would always stay with my grandmother whenever whenever they vacationed yeah. or never or whenever like my dad left to DR. Um yeah, so then I was like and I also didn't pursue like music to the uh, to the fullest that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I know, like, once I left the hospital, like, it was a wrap. Like, I was outside. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this shit. I'm going to work hard. I'm trying to, like, really, really, really do it. And, like, I got on planes. Like, I left to L.A. Um, yeah, I was I was outside. That's amazing. And then what was that first, like, actual, like, we can even talk about just song, like, that first song that you released as Hennessy and that experience at that time? Um, the first song I released, um, as like Hennessy was one eight hundred slide produced by Skino. Um, that one is like a mixture of like um, me like old Hennessy like my my inner childhood like I was rapping on the second verse yeah, and I true. was just singing like on the hook and like singing on the first on the first verse. Yeah, no, I love that that song. That's crazy. That is true. That it was your first song. It's a, a local hit for sure. That's a that's that's a strong uh, debut. <clears throat> To be yeah. very honest. And then now, fast forwarding to other bigger moments, because like I've said, if you definitely follow her online, you've seen that she's had, you know, you know, God, you know, God, thankfully, thanks to God, a lot of um, success recently. So the first moment uh, or the first major tour that you happened, breaking down how that, you know, happened, that connection and you even being, you know, uh, being able to, you know, I even do that. Like, what was the situation? That, what did someone make a call? Like, what was did someone like reach out to you because like, they loved like your stuff? And also go into that moment because I know that had to be a crazy experience. Like actually touring, you know, going shows live, performing live, like that whole experience. Yeah. So it was after I dropped um, my single "I Get Lonely." Um, D Gomes, he like texted me. He was like, um, "There's this guy, Dave." And he's saying he really wants to work with you. He says you're extremely talented. Um, he just wants me to connect you with him. And he's like, you know me, I'm not going to connect you with someone that I don't trust that would, like, be a suit for your career. Thanks. And I'm like, okay, yeah, like, for sure, let's, um, like, connect me with him. And then Dave's like, yo, like, I think you're super talented. I think you're an incredible artist. Like, I love your voice, and I want to work with you. So we ended up going to New York. Um, I recorded Not A Love Song at Manhattan Beach Studios. It was me, Cam, Lay. That, um, that ended up going to New York, and that's when I met Dave for the first time. And so when we recorded that song, he was like, yeah. And this was um, during COVID. So, like, we're talking. He's like, um, I, I promise you once um, COVID's over, because he also um, does shows. Yeah. So he's like a, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, I don't know. Is he a uh, pen group? He's pen group. Yeah, yeah. Cause I remember Blessing. Shout out to Blessing. When Blessing was in here talking, she kind of uh, 
broke that down and spoke to us about that as well. So shout out to Dave at Pent Group. So I don't know what you would kind of call that. Maybe like a sort of like a tour uh, booking, organizer, a booking, booking tour booker. It, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So yeah. at the time he was talking to you about what possibly. Yeah. He was like, um, cause it was COVID during the time. Yeah. So he wasn't doing shows. Yeah, definitely he was not. Like, um, once this is over with, um, I'm going to get you on the show. And I'm like, mm. People just be chatting sometimes, so yeah, I wasn't yeah. taking it too seriously. Yeah. But then I was like, "All right." So fast forward, uh, I forgot what month it is, but I'm in I'm in LA at the time, and I'm sleeping on um, D's couch. Mm-hmm. And like, I wake up to a text from Dave, and he's like, "Yo, you want to open up for a boogie?" And I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean, do I? I was like, of course. Like, yeah. Boogie was like one of my favorite rappers in 2017. Like, yeah, yeah. That was like my guy. So like, it's it's crazy to foreshadow. Like I, when I met a Boogie, I told him that I showed him like all my old tweets about him. I'm like, oh, bro, wow. like I was, yo, know, like I was like a really big fan of you because I lived in New York that summer. So they were just wow. bumping him heavy. Yeah, that was like his prime years. Yeah, they were just bumping him heavy. Him and PMB Rock, they were bumping like Oof. extremely heavy. Oh my God. So. I was just like, yep, I'm doing this. Got my team. Like, I was like, Cam, you're going to be DJing for me. I need you. You're the only one I like. I yeah. trust the DJ for me. Um, my best friend, Zeze, he's my room manager, like my day to day. My best friend, Lay, she was my photographer. Shout out to Lay. Yeah, and we were just, we just on the road. Wow. That's amazing. And then break down that experience. What would you kind of like even rate that? Like, how was that? Like, was it amazing? Was it like, uh, would you do you have any regrets? Would you do it all over again? Or was it like, you know, what was that first tour experience going on the road? I'm still chasing that high from the really? first tour. Like, I don't know when I, I'm i going to feel that feeling again. Like, maybe because it was my first time performing in an arena in front of, like, thousands of people. Yeah. So, like, the first time you experience that is such a high that... It's just like I want to experience that again. Like yeah. even though I'm still going on tours, and like now I think I'm more focused on just being better and like being a better performer, mm-hmm. and just working harder on stage. But at first, it was all new to me. So yeah. like I would hold the mic like this, like when I'm like at rehearsal, and then Cam's like, "No, you can't, you can't do that. Like you can't yeah, hold yeah. the mic like that on stage when you're out there." Um, I move around a lot, so I perform like a rapper. So now, like this, this, um, this time around when. when when I'm on tour, I'm learning to be more still because mm. as an R&B sing- singer, people are going to be focused on you when you're singing. Yeah. But I guess like I was just so worried about crowd control. Like, yeah. cause I was on tour with a rapper. Like it was me, a boogie cash page, Lil wreck. And I, f- I forgot who else, but it was mostly like rappers. So I'm just, seeing how they have crowd control they move yeah. side to s- from stage to stage so i think that's what gravitated a lot of fans towards me because they see this r&b singer on stage performing like a rapper yeah like i'm getting down and i'm like interacting with the fans like i'm jumping on like the blocks where they have like um the speakers and just yeah, yeah. like vibing with everybody so it was it was great and we was on the road like cons- like day like every day yeah um and it just felt cool to be like with like my friends and we're just traveling state to state, staying in hotels, trying new foods, meeting <sighs> new people. So it was just it was just an amazing experience. And every time I'm on tour, it just feels it feels great, too. But just that that first time man, it was just incredible. I think I'm going to I think the second time I'm going to experience that is when I perform out the country. Mm. And I said that like um 2023 is like my two like main goals is i really really want to perform at a festival and i want to perform out the country well at least one show outside yeah, of the country yeah, yeah at least one show out the country yeah no listen yeah because it was uh it's an amazing thing i think a lot of people i don't know because you live in a day and age where like you can blow up on social media and you can kind of like you know uh who's good to compare maybe like yeet i know yeet has blown up recently this year he's very huge but he doesn't really try to care about stage presence he doesn't ever really perform he says you know to every festival but it works in his favor because he kind of doesn't need that mm-hmm. but when it comes down to the traditional like actual artists you need to know how to perform right you, and you gotta know how to like yeah you gotta know your stage presence you gotta know you know where to walk on the stage 
what to do with your hands, small things that matter, Extremely. you know, looking at the crowd, the crowd control, like you said. So I think it's amazing that you actually experienced that, especially at a high level so early in your career that is going to really like mold you in the future to, you know, perfect that to the maximum, to maximum extent. And when it comes to yourself, when it comes to your actual aesthetic and your actual image as an artist, you do R&B, but you don't have the very stereotypical, you know, especially as a female artist in R&B, like attire, the way you dress is very fly and very, you know, like reminiscent, I guess, how you kind of said earlier where you were going on stage and you would, you know, walk around the stage like a rapper. You almost dress fly like a rapper, you know. What would you say or how would you summarize your swag, your actual, you know, the aesthetic of Hennessy and why you stand out amongst, you know, a crowd full of, female R&B artists, no matter what, in my opinion, you're going to stand out? I'm just always cozy. Like, I <laughs> love to be cozy no matter what. Um, and just even growing up, I've always been a tomboy. Like, I've mm -hmm. always been outside on the block, like, playing manhunt with my older brother. Um, my mom always dressed me in, like, oversized clothes because that's what I wanted to wear. Like, <laughs> she'll try to put, like, a tight shirt on me or, like, tight jeans, and, like, I'll be like, no. Yeah. I want a big t-shirt. So what she would end up doing would be giving me, like, my older brother's clothes. So I would rock his clothes. Or, like, we'll go thrifting and I'll get, like, oversized clothes. So it just kind of continued as an adult. I still feel comfortable dressing, like, just like a tomboy and dressing cozy. No, I, I love that. I love that because it's just you being yourself. Um, and without you even trying, you kind of have, like, an advantage of, amongst other artists where it's, like, you do this music, the sound, this genre, but... You're not the stereotypical when they look at you. You're different. And it's like, oh. And it's like, especially men, when we look at you, we can be like, oh, she's fly. Like, oh, shit, she got some dope pieces. Oh, the way she's rocking that, you can emulate. Now, if a girl's up there performing with a dress, you know, me, myself, I'm not going to be like, mm, I can cop that. I can wear that dress. You know, it's like a whole different thing. So you have that, you know, natural advantage, in my opinion. And when it comes down to the actual art, the music, R&B, would you break down your opinion when it comes to how you create a song, the process of a song. A lot of people obviously relate R&B to emotions. Maybe you went through a certain heartbreak when you made a song, but specifically, which song that I, I wanted to know about specifically, you breaking down this one, how you even created it, and when it came down to even the production of this one, the, where is it? This one, Is it the... All for Nothing? All for Nothing, yeah, right here. All for Nothing, yeah, because that's one of my favorite ones from you. So from start to finish... All for nothing when it comes to the production, <clears throat> the lyrics, and like your actual, okay, day one of creating this. Because a lot of people know how, I feel we hear stories all the time, how rap songs are created, but not really R&B songs really, especially a lot of R&B artists don't even do interviews. So what was the creation of All for Nothing? So Pluto sent me that beat a while ago, Pluto Brazy. Shout out to Pluto Brazy, yeah. producer. Um, And it was just a fire beat. It was just so hard. So I was in the studio with Landstrip Chip. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. He's also an artist. He's a songwriter. Okay. And then when we heard that beat, we're like, this is the one. This is the one. So I ended up taking that song home, like back to Prov, and then worked on the second verse. So the second verse, I wrote it in my car. I have a 1977 Buick Electra. Mm -hmm. So like I was a driving classic. around. Yeah, I was driving around the South Side, and I was just kind of reflecting because during that during, like this process of this project, like I was just really just like um, trying to vent more emotional i know like on on the second verse i'm like reflecting i'm like damn like i fuck shit up so it's like more of like my self-awareness but usually it depends what i'm going through like when i write music i know like i get lonely i was still sad so like that one <laughs> so so that one that one was fun that one was fun to write like cam he brought um well, he brought Seth to the studio and they added bass on it. They added piano mm -hmm. on it. And that song, it just, I, I named it I Get Lonely because just that, that word was in my head. And then like Drake too, you know, mm -hmm. that's one of my it's favorite. A he like um, did, a, did a cover to like TLC of that song. And yeah, so it really just depends on, on the mood. I'm getting into like now collabing with songwriters and like trying to take the elevate the music and and make it sound better than it than it did before. Like there's no there's no um what's the word for it? Like it's a given that I can write music. Like I yeah. write my music, but I I see myself at a point where 
I want to become a superstar. And yeah. all the superstars work with songwriters. Yeah, so you're not afraid of the collaboration. Yeah, I'm not afraid. Like, I love collaborating because it's just a, you're bouncing off ideas and you're met, like it's just it's just so dope, man. Yeah, because people have that stigma a lot with artists. Um, but then again, going back to hip hop, it always kind of stems from that era and that sort of genre of hip hop and like oh, the go you can't have a ghostwriter, etc. But then we have artists like Drake breaking the mold where it's like the concept is now to create the best product and you can't just do that by yourself. And, yeah, you know, I, I used to feel that way, too. Like the, the my early career, my music, like I was like, yeah, I'm going to write all myself. But now I was just like, I'm performing in arenas. Yeah. I need powerful hooks. <laughs> yeah. Like I need I, I need I need that music to chart. So it was like when yeah. you're collaborating with people, producers, um, even like with All for Nothing, um, uh, the song was done but i'm like something's missing on this song like, i don't know what it's production like something something's missing yeah so i was listening to um should have known better monica usher you got it bad and i'm like yo we're missing a guitar breakdown like an electric guitar breakdown so we got izzy on it and it just took the song to a whole new level yeah and i feel like a lot of people um they're scared to work with more than one producer and like me i think when you work with as much talented people on one song it just elevates the song like it makes it just sound so so much better than be like nah like i'm gonna mix write produce all my own shit or mm -hmm. i just want to work with just one person that i know is like nah like collaborating collaborating with people is 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 what really takes the music to to uh, to a really high standard no i agree i agree i've never been like that type of to really i feel like that's more of like a internet thing like people kind of like hold that against other artists like oh she didn't write or he didn't write etc but it's like it doesn't really matter it's like the the mad what matters is the outcome the final product do you enjoy it do you not enjoy it okay you know and if like more people helped then that's why you know it's so damn good because like this was a job you know this took a, a a team effort so that's dope how you do that but then you also have the advantage where you are a good writer you know yourself so and you know how to write so you can have the opportunity to maybe you know have you ever enter entertained that yet at all you know, shout out to Lily Rain, another artist out of Rhode Island. I know she's spoken to me about that, that, you know, actually writing for other people and becoming involved behind the scenes, aside from being an artist, becoming a writer. Have you ever, ever yourself even toyed with that idea or have you done it yet? Like maybe behind yeah. the scenes writing some stuff? I know there was like, um, I forgot what pu publishing company wanted to like sign me as a songwriter. Wow. And like um, write music for their artists. But at the time I was just focused on my project. I was like, I can't be giving other people the sauce. Yeah. Oh, I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Especially when you know when you got when it comes to not giving other yeah. people the sauce and companies, you yourself so far have remained independent. What has been that process like becoming and staying so far independent artists? Is it something that you see yourself doing long term? And what have been the struggles so far, if any, as an independent artist? Um <clears throat> I definitely see myself being independent. Um until I build leverage, I feel like I haven't done it done enough yet to to sign to something. Yeah, because it wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't make in my fa It wouldn't work in my favor yet. Yeah. So I just want to continue to be independent and continue to drop music, work my catalog, do more. So when a label wants to present me with something, they're just not trying to half ass me or just they're giving me what I'm worth. Yeah. In a sense. So I'm straight being independent. The only thing about being independent is obviously like budgeting, like money. Like that's always hard for independent artists. But even when you're signed, that's not your money. You're yeah. borrowing it. Exactly. Yeah. And have you had like anything? You don't have to say nothing specifically, obviously, but have you even had like people? You said that there was like a publishing company that tried to sign you as a writer, but even as an artist, as Ennis Hennessy has a, you know, major label tried to like maybe bring you on their team like they saw you know all for nothing they saw 1-800 slide and they were like yo we want you on your t on the team like let's have a meeting has have you gone through that sort of process at all oh yeah we went to plenty of label meetings in new york um la but they yeah. just weren't it, it just didn't fit in the moment yeah so we stayed independent and how's that experience even been like you know even you know being given that opportunity to even sit in these meetings and you know you know rightfully so you did your i think in my opinion you did the right decision to say no but even being able to like yo as a young girl i wanted to be an artist and now i'm sitting in, in these labels you know these labels the heads these bosses these you know companies want to actually sign me like how, did you ever have like an any epiphany moment like oh shit this is actually you know real 
Yeah, uh, we went to Warner in New York, and when we was walking, I seen like the OVO. <laughs> like, I seen like OVO wall. I'm like, this shit is crazy. Wow, <laughs> like I'm in the same building as like where like OVO is like signed to. Yeah. Um, it was it was amazing. Like um, when we met with um, I think his name's Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. Um, I walked in and like I was just sitting down, just being me. He was just like, yo, like you just look like a superstar. <laughs> he was like, even if you don't work with us, like I know, like a couple of years, I'm gonna hear about you. Like you're gonna, you're gonna be it. He was like, your voice is so unique. Yep. He was like, a lot of people can sing, but a lot of people don't have like unique voices. Yeah. And he was like, when I hear your music, I know that's Hennessy. Yeah. So like we we didn't we didn't sign with Warner, but it was it was a good meeting. Like it was cool. Shout out to Jeff. And, yeah. and you're right, Jeff. You're definitely gonna <laughs> hear about her uh, plenty of times. So when it comes to your sound, I definitely see you definitely have a unique sound. But there's definitely I've seen hints of comparisons to I would say the first one that comes to mind a lot. And you said it yourself. You you were a fan of hers coming up, especially around that time when you were a fan of Day Boogie. Is Kalani. So when it comes to Kalani and yourself, what what do you say in response to that sort of comparison? And also. What is your actual, you know, influence from her? Were you, what is your fan, you know, type of relationship with her? Or maybe you might, who knows, God, you never know. She might be working with her already. Who knows? But <laughs> what is your, you know, Hennessy and the Kalani sort of connection right there? I think we're both queer women. Uh, we're both, um, we both love to love. So I think that's where the vulnerability comes within the music and people hear like the comparisons when we're just singing about love. Um, I don't really hear it as much as, like, people say they do. Yeah. I know, like, when she first started, too, people used to compare her to Jenna Aiko. So, like, that, ju that just happens. Like, it's a giving. Like, it's, and we're all inspired by something. Like, no one just comes in a game and just, like, yeah, like, yeah. this is off the top of the dome. Um, yeah, like, she's, she's fire. She's one of the, the most incredible songwriters. She's a an incredible entertainer performer i feel like she deserves more flowers than she gets yeah definitely underrated yeah she's yeah she, she's she's dope but yeah I, I would love to work with her in the future i could see that happen i think yeah, there'll be a match fine. made in heaven um and i think it's a good thing like a lot of people obviously do that but i think it's just for lack of you know a lot of people it's, it's not a bad thing like it happens all the time like chris brown the weekend album that came out people were doing the michael jackson comparisons but they always compare my um chris brown and michael jackson but it's like it's it's a compliment at the same time because these are great artists you know yeah. it's a thing but then as an artist yourself i would imagine it's a struggle it's like okay but that's i'm me you know what i'm saying like you're saying that but i'm me but at the same time as a consumer I'm, i look at it where it's like it could be definitely a benefit because it's a compliment. It's a, it's a, if they were comparing you to someone that was whack or something, I'd be like, okay. Like if they say like she sounds like when Little B first came out, I was like, oh, what the fuck? That's that's ridiculous, you know. Yeah, Little B was fire when he first came out, bro. I was uh, a Little B fan. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not right away. Not right away. <laughs> I love Little B. It took me, took me some time to get and to the Lil base B guy. Loves Rhode Island. Yeah. I don't know, don't, don't get me wrong. He he's one of my dream, dream interviews, but I know it won't happen because I'll, I'll just randomly start crying while, while he's here. Like I'll just he'll just make me cry, and then he'll cry, and everyone just starts crying. Yeah, he's a, he's a, a beam of a beam of light, little yeah. B. But going back to now the touring, you connected with someone that we have you know mutual connections with. Shout out to Trippy Red. When it came to the Trippy Red connection, break that down, that experience meeting him, and yeah, yeah, that whole time was it a full because i'm trying to recollect was it a full tour what was the process with uh, mm. the trippy red yeah it was supposed to be a full tour but a few shows got um rescheduled to the top of the year but i think we did like three shows together maybe two um it was cool he's he's an incredible um performer he'd be raging on oh, stage yeah so like that was just like the transition from like going um opening up for like a melodic rapper where like um a Boogie singing about love. I mean, Trippie Red does sing about love, don't get me wrong. But, like, the way he performs compared to um, A Boogie, he's a rager. Yeah, he's more so, like, a rock star. Yeah, he's, like, a rock star. So, it was just, I was nervous about the fans, like, not fucking with me. Yeah. I'm like, damn, like, they're here to turn the fuck up, and I'm on stage, like, singing. Different vibe, yeah. You get me? But he was cool. Um, he wanted to go to the studio. Um, so, Dave, um, like, set something up. Um, I played on my project um, with he was with his girlfriend and she's an R&B singer as well. Yep, shout, shout to yeah. Sky. Mm -hmm. And they were just like, "Yo, like your project's dope." Like, and he played me some unreleased music, and his shit was fire too. Yeah, 
That's the problem. His his unreleased should we're be amazing. And never we're drops it. For it. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. But that's dope how you connect with him and he actually gave you the time of day at all to like, you know, hear your music and stuff. No, he was super humble. Like he let us play so like so much music. Like he played he played so much music too. So yeah. it wasn't he wasn't like yo stop or yeah. like it was it was good vibes. Like yeah. we were just really vibing playing that's music. Fire. Listen, and and especially going back to like how shout out to Jeff again from Warner, but like that concept of like in the future you're gonna hear about it. You know, whether he works with you or not right away or in the future, he's going to definitely hear your stuff. And he's probably going to be like, oh, shit, I remember when she played, she played me her music. Yo, that's crazy. You know, these are moments that these artists, I think, even themselves, if they're real people, like he definitely has moments of, you know, always, sh you know, showing genuine love when he can. It, it's because they realize that, too. Maybe they realize, you know, they remember when they were coming up as an artist. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> if someone gives you that time of day like that, you're going to always, you know, remember that. And it's going to kind of mold you. Another huge artist that you connected with was Jack Harlow. What was that experience with Jack Harlow? Shout out to Jack Harlow. You know, Grammy nominated, huge, one of my favorite, you know, new artists. That tour and that experience with Jack Harlow. Uh, he's another superstar. Um, that was when he dropped... Um I've been a G the yep. what's the song the Fergie um, the Fergie yeah, the Fergie yeah, sample yeah. that's when he dropped that song so he was going up like first class he was his whole tour was like sold out basically yeah. and he was extremely humble um he went on tour with uh, his friends the homies so like when I got off stage they were just like yo like you're so fire um where are you from and I connected with them first and then they were like they're the ones they're like yo do you want to meet um Jack and I'm like of course yeah for sure <laughs> so like all right cool like come on I'm, I'm gonna introduce you so like they made the introduction they're like oh like jack yo this is hennessy she's fire she opened up for you and he was just really humble he was like oh nice to meet you like how are you and we were just talking about music and stuff and that's cool. dope that's dope no I, I love that who, who has been if you have you know with uh, you don't have to say it but you know because i don't want anyone to feel any type of way but have you do have any like favorites amongst these you know huge artists that you've connected with who's been like your favorite one or maybe favorite experience out of all of them a boogie a I boogie love, I love still yeah, yeah wow I'm, I'm about to have a couple of shows with him again coming up again yeah um in connecticut december 17th wow yeah is any in rhode island or no no nah, none in rhode island. i know i know, I know a boogie I, loves rhode island i don't know <laughs> if he's coming to uri Oh, yeah, he is coming the to Kings, I think I saw a Kingston post. I think Blessing posted it, I yeah, think. Yeah, you, you guys can come. Oh, say no yeah, more. We're going to be in there. <laughs> hey, Boogie with the hoodie. Listen, <laughs> hey, Boogie loves Rhode Island. I feel like he has like a condo out here. He doesn't tell nobody. <laughs> Bro, he'd be <laughs> here every week. Well, when he was like scorching hot, he was yeah, here every weekend. Every weekend. If we're being honest. Every weekend. Every weekend he was booked at every the at the strand. I'm not even sure if it was the strand at the time, but he was yeah. booked like crazy. But when it came to your actual name, right? Your name, Hennessy, after the infamous brand the alcohol I'm have you ran into that. an <laughs> not named after <laughs> you're not named after that my bad but a lot of people you know what i mean that yeah. was dumb of me to say that's your legal name yeah but a lot of people connect you to that they always think like maybe oh hennessy oh she's sponsored by hennessy or does she drink hennessy and then your at name you know it's called pour some henny mm -hmm. and a lot of people call you henny right mm -hmm. what has been this sort of situation if any that you've dealt with when it comes to maybe the actual company hennessy or yourself with like maybe maybe thinking like oh maybe should i change my name it is your legal name but have you any have you faced any sort of situations when it came to this because obviously that's such a big brand and a big name in itself when it comes to yourself as an artist when it came to branding i would imagine you've had you know some tough times here and there no yeah so um i'm gonna explain my name first so uh, my mom she named me hennessy because it's the Spanish version of Genesis, which is the beginning of the Bible. So wow. during the time, like, I think the Sega Genesis was out. So my mom was like, I don't want to name you after, like, a video game. So I'm going to name you, like, the Spanish version, Hennessy. So it <laughs> comes full throttle, like, the beginning. I feel like I, I'm the beginning of a lot of certain movements going on right now in New England. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to clear that up. So mm -hmm. people don't think my mom named me after the liquor. <laughs> but like her mom drunk so much Hennessy, she <laughs> named her uh, his daughter Hennessy. That's nah, not the it's, case. It's, it's, it's a Bible name. It's yeah. a Bible name, the beginning. I love that. So, um, I mean, I'm still independent, and I'm not as big as I am. Yet where I'm going to like go through a lot of trouble with with the name at this moment, who knows? But I know like um, Hennessy is like a is like Louis Vuitton, like it's like a corporation yeah. or whatever. So I know when um, we did like the distro, um, they were like, "Yo, you gotta you gotta change your 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 name." Um, 
your name and I'm like I'm not changing my name bro like, it's my government name that's your name yeah I'm like I'm not doing that so it was just on paper we had I just added my last name oh, okay. and I could still do it but I know like in the future I'm gonna probably like with merch like I can't be selling shit that says Hennessy cause like they own that name unfortunately that's so crazy they own me nah okay, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah they own it but um yeah so like pour some like shit like that or yeah. like maybe I'll come up with something else but yeah as of right now Hopefully they don't see this and try to come for me, but... No, <laughs> listen, no. I would say I like, um, if I'm them, I, w- I would advocate towards and put energy towards, you know, if anything, the opposite possible collaboration. Nice. Trying to get a sponsorship by Yeah, Hennessy. because your at name is Pour Some Henny, yeah. you know, and I know you released in the past, not anything with Hennessy on it, but you had the flask, the flask as pour merch, some. Yeah. Pour Some, right? So you definitely might be, you know drinking do you drink have yeah. you drunk in hennessy yeah, I drink Hennessy. you know so she's a, a hennessy drinker so it's like i feel like the best of both worlds can <laughs> come together and collaborate yeah, but i know sponsorship. that'd be tough that'd be, du- that'd be tough that'd be you know hard. but the only major you know situation i saw them you know they definitely worked with nas but other than that i've always heard unfortunate situations you know to like shout to rory and that team when they had like the whole um the hennessy parties now they you know they rebranded it to you know jay-z's liquor you know, do say, do say Palooza, but it used to be Henny Palooza, but they didn't really like that. But I feel like you should be great, especially because you got, you know, positive energy on your side. But aside from that, that's your legal name. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's, that's a legal it's name. That's my government name. That's your government I name. I know, like, um, mm. I'm, a, I'm an avid wine drinker as well. So we were trying to get, like, a, a sponsorship with Great White because that's, like, my favorite wine. And they're, like, local, the mm. Newport. So we're trying to see if that can oh, go I didn't through. Know local out of here. Yeah, Newport Vineyard. Oh, let me shout. Let me send some emails soon, then yeah. <laughs> you'll be hearing from me, Great White. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> let's talk about another artist that recently, this is fresh off the press, reached out to you and show you some love. Um, pro- yeah, yeah, probably my favorite R and B artist of all time, um, I would say, and someone that when it came to sounds, I've always put you in that sort of lane of you know people would say or whatever kalani but i would always say like you know party next door i would love to hear a hennessy and party next door record in the future i feel like that would be perfect and then we saw you tweet that party next door said that he loves your new record but then we saw you post it this week in the actual dm you know i assume i was like i, I never know i'm like oh maybe she ran into him who knows but then it would break down that break down that actual interaction that connection that he reached out and showed you love and also what is your actual, if you have any fandom with Party Next Door and like, were you a fan of him like how I was, you know, Die Hard? I remember his first song. Yeah. We talked about his first song. Uh, was it uh, Millie? A Mill? Still my favorite. A album. Mill on SoundCloud in October. Make a Mill on, on SoundCloud. Yeah, I was in, you know, I think it was a Spanish class. I stepped out and yeah. I was like, yo, I got to check this on SoundCloud. October's yeah. already on. Oof. Who is this? Is Drake's new artist? God, bro. It's like I can talk about we, especially him. We could talk about it all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite. But artist. talk about that Hennessy connection and him showing you love and you know how that even how how that happened and how you even feel now after that it happened. Um, he's a legend, and that's what I DM'd him. I was like legend, and then like I think I put my phone down. I was like chilling. Cause my my phone was on do my phone's always on do not disturb. So I took my notifications off of Instagram as well. Then I go back on Instagram a couple of hours later, and he responds. He's like, "I love you, can't let you go." Record, and I'm like, "Is this shit real?" I was like, <laughs> "What?" He responded, <laughs> and I was just like, "No bullshit." How did he see that? Like, yeah. I know he gets millions of DMs. Of, like, a, you you follow him, but does he? He doesn't follow you. No, nah, he don't follow me. But that's crazy. Yeah, so I was just like, "Damn!" Like. Does, did he know who I was prior to me DMing him? Yeah. Like, that's, like, the type of time I was thinking. Because I'm like, this is crazy. I was just like, wow, like, this is incredible because he's an amazing artist. Like, to that's me, amazing. he's he's the one that created that whole, like, um that, like, trap soul sound. Like, he's the one that, like, the pioneer of it. Him, OVO, like, they got that. 100%. Yeah. So I was just like, damn. This, no, that's a huge crazy. one. Yeah. That's a huge I, I, one. I didn't want to post it at first, but my team was like, just post it. Oh, you got to. You got to post your W's, man, at the yeah. end of the day. 100%. You know, and, like, I feel like he would appreciate that as well. Like, he's, you know, he's, like, you called him a legend. So, it's, yeah. like, fuck it. You got to post that. That's a, that's a legendary, you know, feedback. And your song, you know, that's out right now, that song, what's, what's the title of it again for the people who don't know? The one he, he liked a lot? Um, Can't Let You Go. I saw it pop up on <clears throat> the YouTube, I think YouTube R&B mix. And that was like naturally, 
without even my account signed in i saw it i was like oh wow look at hennessy on here with this and i'm like yo so maybe your song is just making the rounds where it might have seen the likes of a party next door you know and he saw it and he just naturally you know genuinely liked it Mm -hmm. but i think that's a fire just you know moment in general like that's we love party next door like we're yeah, i love party next door too. like that's a that's a different level of uh that's like a cult following type of shit when it comes to him like and he you know party if you're listening we want you dropping soon drop more music we're waiting we've been waiting like crazy yeah. and you know work with hennessy i think that'll be a dope yeah, ass that'll be fire that'll be that'd fire be as tough, fuck bro. that'll yeah, be that'll tough be hard. That'll i be might hard. cry bro <laughs> 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 yo no party man party everything about him is amazing now uh when it comes to r&b i i have this question i'm not sure if you're prepared when it comes to top five r&b artists of all time in your opinion now this could be your favorite you know it doesn't have to necessarily be top five dead or alive like a uh, written in stone and at the same time it's your opinion people can feel however they feel this is not no one's getting insulted but who do you have a top five r&b artist being an r&b artist yourself that's a hard question because i listen to a lot of music but Oof. um it doesn't have to be in order either yeah, if you are giving a list it doesn't have to be in order um my top five r&b artists in no order lauren hill brandy stevie wonder Michael Jackson, and I'm going to give that last one to Beyonce. Ooh. Those are big names. Yeah. And those are big. I like those names. I didn't expect those names. But I like those because they also teeter the fence of pop and also just rock star, like huge, like, names. So, sort of how you said earlier where you kind of want to veer towards. You don't want to just box yourself in as, like, you know, just like the R&B music that you kind of just either cry or have sex to, like the stereotypical that you want to become a Time star. A timeless music. Yeah. Like the fact that I, those a lot of those artists aren't even from my time. like And they're legendary to me. I still listen to the music and it still feels current to me. Like Brandy feels yeah. current to me. Oh my God, Brandy. But even like Lauren Hill, I like how you categorize her as um, R&B. I, uh, she, I guess it's, yeah, she is R&B. Mm-hmm. She is R&B music. She's an incredible artist. And she's one of the most sampled, like, songs in R&B, like, history. They always sample her song. Yeah, X Factor. Yeah, all the time, so. It's an amazing song. That's amazing. Okay, and then now, when it comes to, do you have uh, top five, maybe, songs? No. I know that's a tougher hard. question. <laughs> or let's break it down to more. Do you have one favorite R&B song of all time that comes to mind right away? Um, More current, Um, I Love You Too Much, Lucky Day. Mm. I think that song um, is like a pivotal of what uh, a lot of R&B songs should be right now. You know, it has like the hook, the bridge, the chorus, like the breakdown. It's an incredible song. He's an incredible vocalist. And I think that that song's in in, like my top R&B songs of all time. Wow. But um, I mean, every song from Brandy's Never Say Never album is in my top like R&B songs. But yeah, I just wanted to bring it more like current. <laughs> yeah, you you and Wongo love um Lucky Day. I yeah. I, I, I I'm try I be trying. Yeah, Lucky Day's good, bro. Hey, I be trying, my, man. My I gotta get Texas more into him. Lucky Day go crazy. No, nah, he's he's I be he's trying. Fine. And and he's older. He's like thirty six. That's what would be shocking me. So he gives that he gives that like soulful like R and B music that I love like that I listen yeah. to. He gives the pen like the dream. Yeah, no, I like, love the dream. I love the dream. But yeah, Lucky Day. And when it comes to like keeping it current, how about this year when it comes to 2022, does Hennessy have a top R&B album and a top R&B song? So Renaiss- yeah, Ren- Renaissance, Renaissance and um, Wasteland. Renaissance and Wasteland, your favorite yeah. ones? Yeah. I think I those are agree. the ones that I was repeating more. But yeah, I guess you consider that one. I put her yeah. into the R&B category. So the I thing about Beyonce, she's so big that she kind of like dominates everything. You know, she's... The definition of popular so it's like is she pop but it's like she is r&b but that album was definitely a dance album mm-hmm. it definitely steered yeah. more towards the electronic house music more than she's ever had in her entire career right. but cam is right it did get nominated for everything r&b this year like it's the number That's one true, yeah. so shout out to that one how about song wise off the top of my head i was mentioning steve lacy had the bad habit song that was huge uh, Lucky Day has some popular songs this year, Division. But when it comes to like songs, or it could be just one, do you have a favorite for the year, R&B-wise? No, not off the top of my head. Nothing really? Yeah. 
Just say yours, your own. Yeah, Fuck it. mine. <laughs> All for nothing. <laughs> All for nothing was my favorite. Actually, you know what's crazy is I was looking at my Apple Music um, wrap up, and All for Nothing was number one. Really? So I feel like I was. I haven't really listened to a lot of music this year. Yeah. Like usually, like I love underground music because like Wongo is like one of my close friends, and he's mm-hmm. a journalist. So like we'll send each other music. But I think I really was just listening to my own music this year. Really, I always say that, especially because I uh, a lot of justification they say is to not have their music influence i think little wayne said that said that for like most of his career his career he never listened to nobody i think he just started listening to like new artists like i think this year he just for the first time listened to young Dolph's music like ever um after he passed away but a lot of artists do that to avoid influence do you do that for that or is it just your own thing because you like you love your, your shit so much it's like nah, this is hard i feel like I'm always going to be a fan of music. Once you stop becoming a fan of music, Mm -hmm. you nitpick other people's music and you don't grow yourself. So, yeah, no, I'm always going to listen to other people's music. This year, I just don't. I was just just going through a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, don't say that too loud, though, because if you talk about this year, we did have Diddy say that this year um, he felt like R&B is dead and it sparked a huge controversial debate online at r&b being dead you had old r&b artists legends coming out and publicly talking and you know saying like it's not dead have you listened to the new ones shout to tank tank's a huge advocate for r&b i love tank he has a cool podcast yeah r&b money one of my favorite podcasts out right now in music shout out to the r&b money podcast by tank but hennessy as an r&b artist what do you feel what's your reaction to that did he saying that r&b is dead right now in 2022 I think he's not looking, he's not searching if he thinks it's dead because there's so many underground artists. There's so many blogs that post underground artists. There's so there's a even an Apple Music playlist that like highlight underground artists. So I feel like he's just not looking. Yeah. And as a consumer, you can't be lazy and then have an opinion on like R&B not being being dead. I think it's well and it's alive. Yeah. I would say the same thing. You know, the, one of the most anticipated albums, I would, you can argue even ever, is the SZA follow-up album. And it drops this Friday, finally. I'm so excited for that album. Five years oh later. God, I'm so amped. We got the, and it's like 23, but I think three songs came out, so it's 20 new songs, technically. Yeah. But that's a lot of music. I'm ready. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm like, in that one. <laughs> yo. <clears throat> Control's a classic album. Yeah. That's Control's really one of the most classic. Timeless. And I think you, you have a, you know, great shoes to fill in for lack of better terms but when it comes to female r&b artists right now new age ones you had the scissors the summer walkers they're leaving huge impacts money can argue more than the male r&b artists right and you fall in line with that and you have your sound and you have your unique style that's going to stand out from everyone but do you kind of agree with that do you see like the scope what's your opinion of the scope right now of the landscape of you know female r&b Hip hop, not hip hop, but R and B and hip hop music, <clears throat> and yourself falling in line with this R and B and being a female in hip hop, R and B. What's your reaction to the scene right now? I think the scene is incredible right now, especially like women rappers, um, women R and B. I feel like even like the Grammy nominations, a lot of women were nominated, which doesn't make any sense That's true. when a lot of albums that were released were from women that were great this year. And last, last year, to 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think the, the women, women in rap, rap are killing shit right now. Like, like they're, they're out rapping the men. Um, the, the women are, are singing incredibly as well. But the, the, the men, men are doing, doing their thing, thing too. too. Like Brent, just he's independent and he went number one. That's that's insane. That's, that's true. That's really crazy. That was a huge successful week, oh, first week for him. No, I agree. I, I think it's a, it's a sign of the times and... I don't know. It's a it's a thing with R and B as well, where songs and artists who have already been out. There was this, who said it. I think Swiss Beat said it. I think he said it to me actually. It was a line where he was like, um, "Once once you're in the game, it's basically summarizing." He didn't say it word by word with this, but like this. But it's like once you're in the game, once you're in the actual music industry, you have momentum, you have attention. Let's say you quote unquote fall off, you get cold. You don't really like become not relevant anymore you're still in the game it's just a matter of what are you gonna do like to, with that moment with that momentum you're you're still in it you're still in it you're still in the game but let's pick up some points somehow let's pick up some sort of stats and i think there's multiple examples the major example was um lma with boot up where 
DJ Mustard signed her. I think it was his first artist. I might be wrong, but I think it was his first artist, LMA. And then Boot Up, Mustard was pushing it for years. I think it took like three to four years for it to actually, you know, blow up. And not only did it blow up, it became one of the hugest, like most successful R&B songs of all time, charting like crazy. It had like a two, three year run. People still play like it's, yeah. like it just came out. And then it happens a lot. We have um, now Chris Brown with his song that came out, I want to say in 2019. <laughs> My God, classic record, right? That came out on his older album. And he dropped a new album this year and it had a lot of bangers on it, but people are now gravitating to his older song it blew up online and not even just did it blow up i feel like it was just so damn good that it becomes timeless right and that song is a song that's popular this year but not just popular this year i think it's a song that's going to stay in the test of time we're going to hear that r&b song and mixes at r&b parties for the rest of our lives right but what is your reaction to that like being a <clears throat> part of this and you know potentially which you already have a goal of creating timeless music but potentially becoming you know a part of this timeless era with the r&b and the singing songs that can you know actually stand the test of times because they're not just you know overnight tracks they're not just some quick like you know quick dance records or something that can you know okay you have these songs and even you might have a song in the past that you think like it came out in the past is old to you but you feel like it can maybe have a boot up moment have you experienced this what's your reaction to this you know actual recurring theme that's been happening with older songs specifically in r&b popping up again and becoming new hits uh, i feel like um like whenever i gain new fans they like revisit like my old catalog and they always end up saying that like the old music is fire so i feel like it can happen depending on how you go about it um i know tiktok is like a major platform to yeah. just like promote your music um I wouldn't say my old music was overlooked, but it deserves like a bigger, a bigger like um, audience. Yeah. Um, like one eight hundred slide, double back, double back was like a summer song. I feel like in the summer it should like go up again. But hundred percent. Um, I think like when it comes to my music, if you don't get it now, you're gonna eventually get it. Yeah, yeah, I, I like I like that. You know, it's it's a it's an amazing thing, especially because you have really great songs that. You know, I know how it can be. I've had so many conversations with artists where they get frustrated, like, oh, that's just old. People already heard it. But I do feel like you have, you know, that potential, those songs that have come out in the past where you can still roll them out again. You know, wh whatever the case may be, second music video, part two, something yeah. that can, you know, g gain that re-momentum again. Because, you know, I think who did it this weekend? Uh, it wasn't R&B, but it was um, Shy Glizzy. That song, White Girl. Oh, yeah, he finally shot a video for he it. He finally shot a video for it. Years? Yeah, because it's picking up <laughs> steam again on TikTok. And Shy Glizzy was like, I'm going to do a video now. The video gained traction. Now the song's trending again. That's fire. And it's almost like it just dropped. But it's like an old song that people love, the old hit of his. And now it's back again. What's your message out there, especially to people specifically listening from Rhode Island, Rhode Island artists, any Rhode Island Providence artists that are watching this and are fans of yours and have seen your success? They're like, damn, Hennessy has done a lot of dope shit out here. She's making moves and I am an artist and I want to make some moves and I want to, you know, potentially gain as much momentum as she has so far. What's your advice to them watching right now? There's no I in team. You know, we always hear that growing up for a reason. I felt like in the beginning of my career, I, I did a lot of shit on my own. Mm -hmm. But I, the way I saw my career going, I wanted to elevate it. And I couldn't do it without my team. You're going to need a team. No matter if you think you could do this shit on your own, you cannot. Especially if you're trying to elevate and go further and be successful. You've, it's, it's impossible like I'm telling you it's impossible to do everything on your own and I'm so grateful for my team and my team is my friends like mm -hmm. I, I probably 98% was I mean 98% is my friends probably 2% was like outsourced like my best friend Lay does my, my pictures my graphic designer Kojo I've known him since like 2016 like if you if you're around people that believe in you they should want to help you. They mm -hmm. should want to elevate your career. If if they don't, then you're not around the right people. You know, um, I never, I don't think like any part of my career, um, like even going back to like 1-800 side, 
I've never complained about anybody not supporting me because my friends supported me so much. Yeah. You know, and I feel like that's a slap in the face to them where I, where they're reposting my shit, they're listening to my music, they're putting other people on. Then, like, I hop on social media like, damn, like, I don't get no support from the city. Like, I, I don't ever want, I want my friends to feel like I don't acknowledge what they do for me because it, it plays a huge part in my career, you know. So definitely, um, you definitely need a team to become as best as you can and and go as far as you want to you know yeah that's how i feel and no, I, i'm so grateful for my team i i know um like outside of like talent i know i wouldn't be where i am right now in my career without my team like i could i could not yeah. do this shit by myself no facts i, I really uh, i appreciate that especially when it comes to the concept of how you were even were breaking it down when it came to locally i feel like a lot of artists they have had that sort of like weird feeling of like damn like they feel sour like oh my city's not supporting me and a lot of people have even vented about it online but i al I would always advocate against that because <coughs> i don't think it's very beneficial to yourself as an artist you can be frustrated everyone has their frustrations but at the same time i think if you're not showing like true you know confidence in yourself then a lot of people are not really gonna even fuck with you because they're gonna be like damn okay that's kind of fucked up like you feel like you just deserve that just because you're from here but then even breaking it down you being from here you're from the south side of providence what is your actual breakdown of providence rhode island how would you summarize providence rhode island when it comes to hennessy what makes it special to you we're so diverse like it's so cultural here like when it comes to like the food the music i feel like even with like artists we all sound different because we all aren't inspired by one sound like we we don't have like a pivotal like artist that like came came out of here where we're like yo we're trying to be like that artist like i'm sure like in toronto people like oh, i want to be like drake the weekend because mm -hmm. that's their artist atlanta people want to rap like young thug because yep. they have thug you know um we 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 don't have someone that we can look at that is is that artist yet so we're all just inspired by like just the culture around us you know um and the music's amazing um the food is amazing the women are beautiful so yeah providence is just it's really special it's it's really special and like i feel like we're one of one i love that that's actually a very 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 great answer i like mm -hmm. that <laughs> mm -hmm. i agree with that man it's true i never really thought about it that way but it's very true like we don't have that sort of one sort of like sound that someone can piggyback off of but it's not necessarily a detriment. We benefit from that because exactly. it could keep us as diverse as we've been because we have R&B artists coming up. We have rappers coming up. We have rapper rappers that are like battle rapping style, like a Spanish flawless. Spanish music, Nino. Yeah, we got Nino doing the Dembo. We got other people, you know, doing Spanish music. So it's like there's different lanes for everyone. We got writers, you know, people yeah, that just write. Storm for uh, shout out to her. I got to I, I want to get her on. Shout out to yeah, Storm. Fire. She works. So, uh, and Break down that real quick. She worked on, on the new project, which we're going to get into right now, the current stuff that you have out right now. For the people who don't know, what's the name of the new project? Why is it an, it, is it an album? Is it an EP? And let's talk about also, after that, people that are on it, just s such as um, Storm. Um, my new EP is entitled Time Revealed, and there's six tracks on there, including the two prior singles can't let you go off or nothing and storm ford is the feature on the song nowhere wow and what made you um connect to storm shout out to storm out of here you know rhode island but she is making her way up out there um, amazing one of the new young you know go-to writers that a lot of people have been making articles about but why is she the only feature why no one else um outside of her being like an amazing um writer she's just an incredible artist like she's an incredible vocalist and I always wanted to work with her. She's she's dope. And we we went to Atlanta, um, for that reason, to, like to lock in with Storm, lock in with other producers, um, and it just felt it just felt natural when we made the song um, Nowhere. Um, we we said it was gonna be on the project because it was just that good. And I'd rather have one feature from a Providence artist than like a stranger. Yeah, I love that. And why the title? Why that name? Time revealed. Time revealed. Um, time, I feel like, uh, I've been explaining this in a lot of interviews lately, but I came up with the name Time Revealed because after, 
after a couple of months, I think a year, a lot of situations like unfolded and I realized a lot of things happened and it revealed in itself, you know, and through that it unraveled growth and unraveled healing and unraveled great music. So it revealed a lot of a, a lot of things that I couldn't see at the moment and a lot of things that I I was trying to forget about. So I feel like when when these songs when you hear these songs, you hear a lot of vulnerability, you hear a lot of intimacy, and it it just fits the title of the project so well. Okay. And do you have one favorite um song that you want people Pretend we're on the radio right now and they're like, oh, pl- play that song right now. What would be the one go-to? Or let's say you walk into a room of someone that can literally change your life based off this next song that you're going to play. What would be that one song off this project? Um, Switching Places. That song is beautiful. It's like an alternative record kind of like on the project. It don't sound like any of my old music. And I've seen a lot of um, a lot of Spotify playlists. They've been picking it up. Mm. So I think that's that's pro- but I won't say that's everyone's that's not everyone's favorite because everyone keeps telling me different different songs that they that they like a lot. Um, she can't is one that everybody is like is like vibing with. You know, it's not that um, it's not like my normal like um, soft and and love song. It's like me like talking shit on that song. Like um, it's a dirty Mackin song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's one of my favorites as well. The whole project is like I can't pick a favorite. It's just to me, it's just I love all of them. That's a good thing though. That's a good thing because you put something out that you're proud of and you're confident in. And when it comes to Hennessy, in the future, five years from now, where do you <clears throat> see yourself? Where do you see the future of Hennessy, the artist, the person? Because that is your legal name, so the person as well. Yeah. Where do you see yourself five years from now? Five years from now, um, happy, alive. Um, I want to venture into becoming more of a businesswoman. You know, I want to have um, go into more avenues. Whether it's like I told you, like I'm a really like an avid wine drinker. Maybe like create my own wine. Mm. I'm heavy on like uh, my edges being laid, like mm. edge control. Just like going into things like that. Um, um brand brand deals like being brand ambassadors for things um my music like i said too as well i want to perform out the country i want to perform at festivals um i just want to continue to elevate my music elevate my mind learn more read more books um grow be a better friend be a better daughter just 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 keep just growing and yeah. elevating in life i love that you heard it here, Hennessy. Listen, man, I'm I'm very very excited for your future. I think it's gonna be successful. Uh, you you have all the you know if it was like a formula pot, a melting pot, however they say of like cooking up a formula, you have everything mm-hmm. in it to be very successful. It's just Thank time you. will tell. I think that's all it really is. Time will reveal. Time will reveal. <laughs> Out right time now, time reveal. Reveals. You know, first soaker moment. <laughs> yeah. um, any last words or anything you want to say at all before, you know, ending the conversation? Um, I have an upcoming show with Monica. That's my first R&B show. Monica, Joe, and John B. He's a Rhode Island legend. Wow, yep. Um, so I'm super excited for that one. So if anyone's in, in the city of Connecticut, um, December 16th, I'm going to be performing with them. Um yeah, stream stream my project. Um, I worked really hard on it. Um, it's an amazing body of work, and I think you'll find your favorite song on there. There we have it, Hennessy. Much love to everybody out there. This is Cap. We appreciate you. Promise, Ryan, listening. <laughs> Be safe, everyone. After the Hennessy interview, we're here. We're back. Me and Marloon, Marloon and Sound, about to cover some topics for you guys. The weekly sixty-one episode of Cap. Uh, a lot of talk, a lot of stuff to talk about. But first, let's start off with the relatively relevant stuff. So, last week we had a huge episode, the biggest episode yet. Jeremy Pena, huge episode, man. Nice. Shout out to Jeremy Pena um, for stopping by the studio, man. That was a blessing. Sharing his time with us, very, very, very busy man. You know, had a conversation with him off camera afterwards that I'll keep private, but I'll, I can sh- share some hints. You know, we might. Have more stuff, you know, coming with him. Hopefully soon. Rap album dropping or what's going on? You know, little mixtapes. After that freestyle, <laughs> he got a call. He said from Epic Records, they want to sign him to a ten million dollar contract deal. Oh 
the first MLB star with a rap album. I was like, <laughs> damn, bro. I don't know. I don't know what you should do, bro. Oh, but God. in all seriousness, man, it's a blessing. Successful episode. Shout out to everybody that's showing love. It's picking up steam. Three hour episode. I didn't even put timestamps in it. I was going to, but it picked up more steam than I imagined, especially without the timestamps. So I was like, all right, I'll just keep it without timestamps. Yeah, fuck the timestamps. People like, like it. Like, yeah, it's like it, the whole the whole thing is 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 interviewing him and shit like that, you know. Y'all, exactly, y'all just being y'all and shit. So it's like it's not like you're gonna have the same questions that the people who are viewing. You know, it's fuck the timestamps. Yeah. Watch the whole fucking video, bitch. Yeah, and everyone keeps saying that, that they watched it from beginning to end, and they and they watched it, they stopped, they went back to it another day. So you know, it's helping the views go up. So appreciate you guys. You know, what the the fuck oh, is in my throat? God, God bless. I got pussy uh. <laughs> But they saying they're saying, man, online that they love it so much that it's uh, a lot of people commenting the best uh, baseball interview of all time. A lot of people saying Jeremy Pena doesn't need any other interview after this one, and I agree, he doesn't need any other one because no it's not gonna match. Jeremy, no more interviews unless it's by us again, part two, because <laughs> it's not gonna match. Um, but very excited, you know, it's going trending on Twitter, it's picking up steam on TikTok, and now it has now it's going viral on TikTok three days later. The clip that I made, I was like, okay. At first, I was like, it's not getting traction. Then it got traction. Mm. So, shout out to everybody that's showing love. The Houston Astros fans tapping in. We got a lot of Houston love. A lot of Houston Astros fans are now subscribers and fans of ours. So, we appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Um, and there we have it, man. The Jeremy Pena interview is out right now. Go check it out. Legendary, legendary stuff from the Club Ambition team over here. So, continuing the topics, let's talk about... What did I have on the list? So, we had that... Let's talk about this real quick. FIFA, have you been watching the World Cup? I've been seeing you posting about Argentina. Oh, so from your your eyes, because I feel like you definitely know more than me, even though I know the general shit, <coughs> but I know like the big news. Like I saw Ronaldo sign today, etc. But what's your summary, your quick recap of the World Cup from Marlon um, so honest, far, honestly, this weekend at least? So in general, a lot of the teams that I thought that were going to make it further have not made it. Mm -hmm. uh, very surprised. Um, then there's been, you know, underdog teams that have been making some fucking wins, you know, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Um, today was what? Today was Brazil and, and uh, Korea. They got fucking bodied. <laughs> oh, my God. Four goals in the first half. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, That's a lot for a game because they, 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 they usually don't do that high. Bro. Over-unders on, on so, be bro, like one point. Three goals under 30 minutes. That's crazy. Three goals under 30 minutes, bro. Four goals in the first that's, half. That's video game shit. That's FIFA shit. Bro, that's crazy, bro. Um, What was another game that was extremely fucking crazy? Uh, damn, what was it? Argentina. No, that one was a good one. Nah, that Brazil. was good. The, uh, there was this game. There was this game where they tied 10 seconds remaining in the fucking clock, bro. 10 seconds remaining in the clock. But they ended up not counting the goal because it was offside. But if they would have, that would have been the spiciest fucking game ever, bro. I don't remember what game it was. Y'all tell me in the fucking comments. I forgot. Because the games are 90 minutes long, right? Uh, Yes. And then but, they add time? Uh, well, that So it depends. You know, right now where they're at, like in the brackets and shit, they have to. So like if you're 90 minutes and you're still 0-0, zero, zero, you're going an extra 30, you know, 15-15. And if you're still nothing, you're going to penalties. Wow. Which they went to penalties today. Um. Who won penalties today? Uh, Japan and... Why am I blanking out another team that I played today? Damn. Hold Listen, up. This is, like, look it up. Fuck it. Look it up. Doom, 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 doom. Because people... Uh, who played in the World Cup today? Yep, Siri knows. Uh, Japan and Croatia. Mm. They went to penalties and Japan whiffed like fucking the first two penalty shots. And, you know, they lost some penalties. That's the first game that has gone to penalties, though. Um, I know tomorrow. Uh, who plays in the World Cup tomorrow? Portugal. So, tomorrow is Portugal and uh in Switzerland. That's gonna be a good game. Um, and then Morocco and Spain. That one's going. Do you be have a, a World Cup like prediction? Do you think it could be the the uh, so, so the glorious Argentina versus so Portugal? I, no, no, no. I want to see Argentina and Brazil. Mm. I want to see Argentina. We'll and see Brazil. Neymar. But this is the but this is the thing. I have a feeling, I don't know, right? I have a feeling because they've been going fucking hard. France. Oh, yes. Might be With the young kid, right? Yeah. That guy's a star. Mbappe. That guy's a star. Listen. That guy's a star. I'm like, I'm falling in love with him every day more and more. 
Listen, man. Wow. France has been going stupid, bro. I think France has only lost one game. Wow. One game. I know it's also by points, right? So, yeah. like, for example, that four-point scoring game yes, uh, that happened yesterday, that or today. Was it today? today. That, that's going to help them a lot, yeah. that team. Because, like, the more points you have, the more you can advance and shit. Listen, man. Well, right now, right now it doesn't even... Right now... To In these rounds, it doesn't matter? Yeah, it doesn't matter because it's either you win or you lose. If you win, you go to the next bracket. If you don't, then you don't. But, listen, shit's spicing up, man. I want to see Argentina and Brazil, you know... I be you know it's just it's just like a classic, bro. It's like when Barcelona and Real Madrid used to play. Oof. Um, I don't watch sports like that. I really don't. I I've only been watching certain games this World Cup. I haven't watched every single one. Like I've watched Argentina games and I watched the Brazil games, but not all of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I want to see Argentina and Brazil. That's so that's that's Marlon's prediction. World Cup prediction. Marlon saying France Ar- might take it. <laughs> France, oh damn. France might take it. France might take know. it, but in a perfect world, you want Argentina and Brazil to go and be the last game, the final. Okay. And okay. honestly, whoever takes it, I and, love both. Teams. And, and camera on me, my my prediction is gonna be. Don't don't say no bullshit. It's gonna be Messi versus Ronaldo. I want to see that happen. You Just see Argentina and Portugal. Argentina and Portugal. Portugal gotta win tomorrow. Yeah, Portugal. If they don't win tomorrow. They're gone. Yeah, so I might not even post this prediction unless. Portugal wins, but let's say they win. <laughs> Portugal and Argentina is my prediction. I want to see Messi and Ronaldo, the two goats, go at it head to head. I think that it's going to be interesting. Top. It's going to be spicy. So that's my you know World Cup prediction. Next topic, I want to get Marlon's opinion on. Kanye West said he's a Nazi. You guys have seen my clip. It's gotten attention. I made a clip talking about it. Spoke about it also on Patreon. Kanye West is a Nazi. So in my clip, I spoke about it, and a lot of people were talking about it. I want to get Marlon's opinion on it. If Kanye West is saying that he's a Nazi, he's saying that he loves Hitler. Should we still support his music? Both meaning, should we still listen to his old stuff? Should we still care about it? Also, should streaming services keep it up? And second, when he drops new stuff, because he probably still will drop music after this, should we care about it? Should we? Will we listen to it? And should streaming music services again even freaking put it up because this is a nazi put in why would you you know what i'm saying how do you feel about it i know i know i kind of know how you do <laughs> i mean my opinion is um someone needs to check this man but someone needs to check this man because y- you saying some crazy shit bro and it's like it's nothing new right we know that he says the crazy shit that he's going to say someone's going to Press him. He might apologize or use that apology to still try to make himself the victim. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I, 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 bro, if he's like real deal, unless this motherfucker also doesn't know what the fuck a Nazi is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's no fucking way. Um... I, he needs to get pressed, bro. He needs to get pressed. If he's dropping shit, I'm sorry. Shit should not be on fucking streaming services and shit like that. It sucks because people that you know they're gonna be like, oh, you know, you gotta separate the human being from, from the, the art. art. Mm-hmm. But it's like, fuck, bro. It's too much. You know what I'm saying? So what you gonna tell me? Hitler as a person ordered to get all these fucking people killed and shit like that. But let's say he was an artist. Let's say he was an artist. Let's say he was a fucking rapper. Yeah. And he's rapping about these fucking... You gonna listen to that fucking music, bro, knowing what the fuck he was doing? Hell no. I'm not saying Kanye West is out here doing shit, killing people and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But you saying some crazy ass shit, bro. Yeah. And, and it's and it's like... it's It sucks because it's like... We know you're a great artist. We know that you can be a great person. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, it's confusing us because where are you getting these fucking ideas from, bro? What is happening in your life where you're sitting down and there's even old clips. I'm pretty sure you've seen it like resurfacing of him like saying like fuck Hitler or whatever the fuck it was. He had a shirt. He would wear a shirt as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, you're sitting down. You know what, bro? What Hitler was doing, I kind of do support that and I get him. (laughs) 
You know what I'm saying? You know what? Let me go out, wear a fucking mask because God, let me not show my face. Yeah, let me not because, incriminate myself. You know what I'm saying? Or show, to be honest, let me not show my fat face. He His mi- face has gotten fat from the stress he, he has, he that might, motherfucker. He might have been cheesing while you're saying that shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I don't really know what's going on with this man, bro. I really don't know. It's sad. Like, like at this point, you can't fucking pinpoint to see if it's it's a publicity stunt or this. Regardless, even if it was, this is you're crossing the line, bro. So far, this is way too. This is a motherfucker that killed people, bro. Yeah. How you glorifying? You know, uh, people who glorify him, we know that have the same fucking intention that believe that that race is more inferior and in infer- uh, 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 um. Superior, Superior yep. and inferior races should be eliminated, eradicated. You know what I'm saying? There's people out there like that, and they live their life like that. So, I don't know, Kanye. I don't know if that fucking Kardashian pussy got you that <laughs> fucked up, bro. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, Tom Brady plows that shit too. And yeah. he, I don't know, man. Yeah, because he said in an interview, he was saying like he was like a yeah, uh, come back home, come back to God, or marry someone great like Tom Brady. Yeah, why would he tell Kim to marry Tom Brady? Bro, I don't fucking know, man. Oh know. my god! I don't. I don't know, man. I, I honestly, me, I've never been like a huge Kanye West fan, so I've never really gave a fuck about his opinions or anything like that. I appreciate his music. I know you've been a huge Kanye oh, West man. fan, so it's like Since day one. So like the fact that back in the day you used to fucking, <laughs> for lack of better words, used to fucking dick ride him. Hell yeah! And now seeing you change the way you view him and shit like that is crazy. You, I can actually tell what he's doing right now is is, is actually crazy, not a fucking character, just by the way you react. You know what I'm saying? Oh no, yeah, that's uh, crazy, bro. There's no, we're not bumping no new Kanye West music over here. I was talking to Sudi about it. Sudi from Cure Collection, shout out to Sudi. He was like. Man, like he was like, I've been looking at my Kanye shit at home and just like looking bro. at that shit like with a weird feeling, uh, bro. A man who's 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 <laughs> preaching what gospel and shit like that, and you're talking a about, Christian. Uh, come on, bro. A Christian. What? A Christian. Like, come on, bro. What? A Christian. Nah, man. So I don't. I don't know. Because especially if you're a Christian, you believe in heaven and hell. So you're very hypocritical. Because in my opinion, Hitler is definitely in hell right now. Oh, come on, bro. If you're a Christian, so. That motherfucker was the devil on earth, bro. That shit was crazy, bro. How much power can you have to to, to be <laughs> able to kill thousands, bro? Millions of people, bro. Bro. Just because you thought they were inferior, you thought you was better. And there's people still joking about it. Like, the comment, like, hell, like they, how they say hell Hitler. They'll be like, hell Kanye. Or they'll be like, um... You guys don't understand what he meant. Still, they, they didn't you young, guys are just dumb. Didn't young boy drop like a song or something like that? Like, st- like stand, like hold up, like stand strong or something about shouting him out. Oh uh, yeah, and that yeah, young boy dropped like a song, and it was like uh, that new song about Kanye. No, he dropped a song. I know he dropped a song like trying to be positive. Now he's trying to stop he, the gun and violence. And he did get like shout out Kanye. Or they connecting to Kanye saying to like stand strong like you're some shit. I don't fuck. Oh up. really? That's what I was seeing. I don't um, know. But I all I know is that shit is I don't know. People comment down below. How do you guys feel? Yeah, people would take this shit as a joke, man. Y'all motherfuckers is stupid, bro. They're part of the problem. They're yeah. definitely a part of that's, that's what people don't realize. You guys become a like, part of the problem when you do that. I'm gonna tell you straight up. Your mom you that dropped in when you was small, <laughs> bro, you ate a lot of fucking dirt. Real talk. <laughs> what if they couldn't afford nothing but dirt, Mark? Yo, fuck, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Nike has officially dropped Kyrie Irving. I just saw that. Yeah. Kyrie Irving officially has been dropped by Nike. We spoke about it in the past where Kyrie Irving and Nike's contract was paused until further notice, but I predicted it here. We knew that was going to happen. It was going to be dropped yeah, because his contract ends, I think, top of the year next year. They're not going to renew it, more than likely, and then they dropped it, right? So now was Kyrie, uh, Conway, Kyrie. Kyrie, too many K names. Many. What's Kyrie Irving's next move? What should Kyrie Irving do? Should Kyrie Irving create his own shoe? Should he work with a upcoming brand to make it popular? That's what I think he should do because he's not gonna work with Adidas more light more than likely. He's not gonna work with Adidas because of the Kanye situation. That's probably not gonna happen. Nike's not doing it again. Where is he gonna go? He needs to go with someone because he's a huge name. What is going to happen with Kyrie? Under Armour is probably going to pick him up. Under Armour. Shout out to Under Armour. I think Under Armour helped uh, Deion Sanders to provide the students with stuff. And Under Armour already has Curry, another point guard. So what should Kyrie Irving do? The fourth crypto billionaire has been found dead near a beach in San Juan, Puerto Rico. 
Now, this is coming off of a theme of crypto billionaires passing away. Bro, hella weird, bro. We spoke about it last week. There was a gentleman that passed away. And their deaths are very interesting where their bodies are found. I believe this gentleman's body was found, it says it right here, on the beach, washed away, a dead body. Now, if you look at his tweets, specifically, very cryptic. This was his tweets before he passed away. He said, and let me just add allegedly in case his whole channel gets taken down. CIA and Mossad and pedo elite are running some kind of sex trafficking entrapment blackmail ring out of Puerto Rico and Caribbean islands. They are going to frame me with a laptop planted by my ex-girlfriend who, who was a spy. They will torture me to death. Month later, he has passed away. Where? In Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. Now, Logan Paul, a lot of celebrities are living in Puerto Rico to avoid taxes because Puerto Rico is now claimed in America as a territory, I believe. You can live in Puerto Rico and you have benefits as an American in Puerto Rico. So this keeps a loophole for a lot of people who are rich, right? So this gentleman who passed away was alluding to this prior to his death. Are we saying that this is facts? No, because I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very suspicious. And guess what? I don't think we're going to die for even talking about it. I think we're good because we're not crypto billionaires. Uh -huh. So a message to crypto billionaires, those that are left alive, open your eyes. Look into this shit and let us know because this is for. Yo, higher security. Or I don't know. I feel like if, if this, God forbid, if this is really happening, which we know, we know it's happening, right? Allegedly, it's obviously happening. Is there any way around it? They might have like no, bro, because he tweeted this shit, right? So he had a feeling, he knew, and then it happened. Because being found dead is one thing, but was it a suicide? Was it not? Even if it was, we've heard of framed suicides all the time. Everyone alludes to Jeffrey Epstein's suicide in jail, in prison, being framed yeah. mm -hmm. this, these things happen cia central intelligence but it's like this, my god this is my thing right? i'm scared of this shit bro this, this is my thing right um first of all look at these people these cryptocurrency billionaires what they look like let's look them up while you're talking two right what do what do cryptocurrency cryptocurrency billionaires have to or do to become a threat you know what i'm saying besides obviously we know that this is low-key falling off and shit like that quote unquote right now right but like we know what the future you know we're heading towards the future and we know that shit like this is probably gonna be the future so like what's the whole point of these motherfuckers being eliminated yeah, it's weird. And why would they, quote unquote, kill themselves? It's very weird. You know what I'm saying? They created this cryptocurrency. They became billionaires, which was the goal off of it. And now you're dead? How does that make any sense? Because even if they're, like, losing money, shouldn't they, like, let's say they're losing money, then they're going to maybe kill themselves. I heard the door, right? You heard something? Yeah, I heard something. It could be just, like, um the temperature, et cetera, the but. We are talking about CIA. So the CIA might be in here. So let's wrap this up soon, guys. We're going to end this topic and end this podcast in case the CIA is trying to creep in and snipe us through here. Um, if they're listening, we are live, even though we're not. Let's pretend we are. We are live. We are live, CIA. But this, to break this down, because I thought they were all young, but there was one that was 53 years old. So Taryn, 53 years old. Kalander, 30 years old. Mushenga, 29. This is three of the four that passed away under different circumstances between October 28th and November 25th, literally a month apart between the 30 days, right? Dealers and analysts are throwing up theories and calls for thorough investigations into what some believe are mysterious deaths because situations like this, look at the digital asset firm of the late Chinese national that passed away, received a $3 billion evaluation in 2022 and was seeking another $100 million in funding. So these were active crypto companies that even in the midst of crypto tanking, they were still seeing success. Helicopter thing. 
They're only going to know if they look into the helicopter stuff. And then the one in his sleep. Uh, My thing is, what are they trying to cover up? Final question. What are they trying to cover up? Are they trying to cover up something crypto related? Are they trying to cover up something pedophile related? We saw what happened with Balenciaga, Jeffrey Epstein. A lot of dark stuff is happening and has, has happened behind the scenes with very successful rich people. And no one talks about it because they're scared. And I'm scared too, so let's stop talking about it. <laughs> there we have it. That's Cap, episode 61. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Make sure to subscribe, comment down below. Make sure to cop that merch out right now. Holiday sale going, free shipping. The merch is out right now. Old styles, new styles. We got the Cap merch, the uh, podcast merch available also on Teespring. That's separate. That's different. You can cop that as well. And yeah, man, we love you guys. Back next week with another episode. There might be a random special guest. If not, like we said, we're going to do that list. We're going to debate in here. It's going to be spicy. I'm ready. Love you guys. They gonna love me for my ambition. They gonna love me for my ambition.